teaches us your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as free and forgiven children of God. Let us pray. Most holy God, the earth is filled with your glory, and before you angels and saints stand in awe. Enlarge our vision to see your power at work in the world, and by your grace make us heralds of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. You may be seated, and the children are invited forward for children's time with Gloria.
Their nets were completely full. But he, in, his, in so many words, he said, don't worry about that. It doesn't matter. Because I'm going to have you fishing for men. What does that mean? It means that every one of us is a fisherman for Christ. We go out every day and we say something that leads people to know that we believe in Jesus. And also, the way we live our lives, because that's what's really important, is what you show other people. The kindness that you provide, the food that some of you provide for the food closet you brought today. Those of you that took bags last week and will pass those out to someone who really needs it. Those are acts a fisherman. Because we are telling everyone there's a better way. And there's someone there for us when, the, when life gets tough. Because life isn't always perfect. Things aren't always good for us. Some of you this week has, have had some losses that were really hard for you. And some of you have had to make decisions that weren't easy for you. But even when life gets tough and the seas are rocky, Jesus is there. And also, we're all there. Because if you need a comforting hand, you need a shoulder to cry on, you need a little bit of levity in your life, we're all there to provide it. Because we all know what it really means to be a Christian. It really means that we go out there among the people that are hurting and we do what we can. So this week, I want you all to be fishers of men. And when you think about that, you'll know that it's not going out on the lake. Okay.
Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Now I will remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which in turn you have received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn have received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, and then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Have you ever, have you ever started a new job or at a new school or a new church and when you looked around, it seemed like everyone else knew what they were doing, that they all had it all together. And any minute now, someone was going to point at you and call you out as being a fraud, that you didn't belong. Or maybe you had studied really hard for a test and you aced it, but you couldn't get past this nagging feeling that the teacher gave you the wrong score and you were going to end up failing the class because you just didn't feel qualified or competent and you were sure that it was just a matter of time before everybody else saw that too. Well, that is called imposter syndrome. It's when you feel like you're an imposter. Not that you are intentionally trying to deceive anyone, not at all, but that it's hard for you to wrap your mind around the idea that the things you have achieved were not by accident that maybe you actually had something to do with it. Sometimes when you have imposter syndrome, you have restless nights where you worry that if your boss or your spouse or partner or your friends only knew the real you, everything would unravel. Now, this more often happens with those of us who don't have a lot of role models who look or act like us. But while women and minorities tend to be more prone to imposter syndrome, that doesn't mean that the rest of you are off the hook. Tom Hanks, who has won two Oscars, who's been nominated for six Oscars, once shared that there comes a time where no matter what you've done, you look around and wonder when everyone is going to discover that you're a fraud and take everything away. And Howard Schultz, the CEO of Starbucks once expressed that he believed that the vast majority of people in high leadership positions did not believe that they actually deserved to be there. I know I have had bouts of this imposter syndrome. I wondered what in the world the candidacy committee was thinking when they approved me to be a pastor. And I figure I must have done a really good job fooling you all <laughs> into calling me to be your pastor. I hope you don't figure it out. I did receive a bit of grace early in my ministry when a much senior pastor with decades more experience than me shared with me that he too, on Sunday mornings before worship, would often have to take an emodium because he was afraid going into the service that he didn't know what he was doing. Sometimes that affects us. <laughs> and I know that a majority of my colleagues, we all have the same recurring nightmare that we're going to show up hours late to worship, have no idea what the gospel
gospel is and can't find our sermon anywhere. These imposter syndrome feelings, they happen to a lot of us. Maybe not all the time, but I'd be surprised if any of you have never felt them. Even in our faith journey, we wonder not only who are we to be the pastor, but who are we to be the assisting minister? Or, or to lead music? Or to run the PowerPoint? Or record the service? Or set up Holy Communion? What if we do that all? Or to give the children's talk? Or greet? Or usher? And how would we know the right words to pray? We might get that wrong. Or the right words to invite someone else to worship. And if we show up at Bible study, are they all going to figure out that I don't know anything about the Bible? Because, you know, I'm sure everybody else does. That, that's why we're there, right? <laughs> but what about God? If God knew everything that I have done, all the thoughts that cross my mind, God might not want anything to do with me either. Well, if you've ever felt this imposter syndrome, Most of us do. Let me give you that grace that the pastor who told me about the emodium gave me. <laughs> you have nothing to worry about. And you are not alone in your fears. In our first lesson today, we hear about Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah who did not feel that he was worthy or had the words to speak. And yet, God made him worthy. God gave him the words and sent him out. And in our second lesson, we hear from Paul's letter to the Corinthians about how Paul, St. Paul, he's going to a city named after him in Minnesota. <laughs> How he did not think he deserved to be called an apostle because he had persecuted Christians. Paul believed himself to be the lowest of the low. And yet it is because of his writing that millions upon millions of us have heard the good news, and millions upon millions will. In Luke's Gospel today, we follow the story of how Jesus, after his baptism, where the voice spoke, giving him his identity. And then after he had wandered in the wilderness and faced temptation and further began to understand his identity. And then he went to his hometown where they all thought of him as an imposter and tried to chase him off a cliff. Jesus went down to the lake shore where crowds gathered to hear what he had to say. So many so that he got into a boat, so he had a better platform to speak to them. And then it gets fun, because after he was done talking, this former carpenter explained to career fisherman, who had just spent the whole night out on the water fishing, and were just finishing up, cleaning up, that 
they should go and put their heads back in the water. I mean, these were fishermen who had been fishermen their entire lives. They knew where all the good spots were, and they knew that wasn't going to be one of the good spots. And they knew that during the daylight, the fish could see the nets and would just avoid them. This was a ridiculous waste of time and energy. But, maybe out of respect, they went and put their nets back in the water. And they caught so many fish that they needed another boat to come up alongside to help them with the haul, and the weight of the fish began to sink both of the boats. It was then, in that experience, that Simon Peter began to realize that this Jesus guy wasn't just a good speaker, that there was so much more to him. That somehow he was holy. And Simon Peter fell on his knees and begged Jesus to leave. Which again, if you think about it, was a ridiculous request. Because they were out on the boat in the middle of the water, not sure where Jesus could have gone. But Simon Peter wasn't thinking about that. All he could think about was that he, as a sinner, was not worthy to be in Jesus' presence. That he was an imposter, and soon Jesus was going to figure it out. But Jesus told Simon Peter that he knew exactly who he was, and that he needed him. In time, you would become Peter the rock on which the church was built. This is the message that we hear in our baptism, in the gift of Holy Communion, that Jesus knows who we are. He knows all about us. He already knows all of our flaws and imperfections. He knows our sin. He knows our doubt. He knows our annoying habits. He knows our growing edges. And still, in our baptism we were chosen and claimed Beloved children of God. We were called, gathered, enlightened, and made holy. And each week, when you come forward, and you dip your fingers in the font and remember your baptism, and when you receive the bread, and the wine or grape juice, and hear the words for you, we are reminded that you are worthy. That Jesus has made you worthy. That you are not an imposter. You are not a fraud. You couldn't deceive God if you tried. You are essential. You are planned. My siblings, you are beloved children of God who have been called and sent to share the good news. And you are exactly where you belong.
I invite you to stand as you are able.
who risk their lives in service of others. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon those who look to you for hope and healing. Bless doctors, nurses, social workers, therapists, and all caregivers. Draw near to those who are scared, sick, or in need. Today we pray for Janice, Summer, Bob, Philip, Tegan, Palmer, Michael, Holly, Jasmine, for the loved ones of Harry Kirstein and Ed Griffith Sr. We also lift up to those uh, up to you those suffering from COVID-19, the medical professionals on the front lines, the first responders, the people of Afghanistan, Ukraine, and our military. Please bring wisdom, guidance, and discernment to all our world leaders to help bring peace. We also ask for the safety of all the athletes who are competing in the Olympics, and that this event can help unite your kingdom on earth. We now lift up to those we name before you now. God of grace, hear our prayer. The disciples received help from partners as they brought in an abundant catch of fish. So strengthen this congregation's partnerships with community organizations and ministries. Multiply our shared efforts and bring joy to our relationships. God of grace. Hear our prayer. We give thanks to our ancestors of faith who boldly answered your call. By their example, give us courage to live in faith and to proclaim your mercy until the day that you gather us into your glory. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. <laughs> Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to grab a full noodle near you and share the peace. Um, introduce yourself to anyone who might be new to you or maybe you just don't recognize them with a face mask.
If you want to give online, at home, or on your phone, you can. Or if you want to save yourself a trip and um, bring it up when you come up for communion, you can. I just like to make sure you're not paying for communion. <laughs> okay, I'm during the offering, you can sing along because we came across this song that's kind of fun. So the words will be up on the screen. <laughs> Remembering, therefore, his preaching and healing, 
universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your spirit, bless us in this meal. That refreshed with this heavenly food, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours. Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. A couple of brief instructions as you come forward. All of the bread is gluten-free crackers. And as you move your way over, there is either red wine or white grape juice. And there's a basket to put your cup in after. Come to God's table. There is a place for you and enough for all.
as you are able to receive the blessing. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you to keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to pray your good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with the richness, richness of your grace and your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated for announcements. Let's see. Tuesday, we have Bible study again, where I believe we're getting into the Acts of the Apostles. And in case you have that fear, it's okay to come if you have never cracked a Bible open before. You are not expected to. And we have Bibles there if you don't have one. So come and join us. We would love that. Um, anything new with the parking lot? It's drying out, maybe? It's getting there. We're getting there, yeah. Okay. Um, so hopefully, one of these days, we're supposed to have a nice, warm, unseasonably warm week this week. Maybe yeah, we can get it finished. I'm going to give them a call tomorrow morning and see if we can spur them on to get out here <laughs> before the next rain comes in. So we're hoping. Um, today, right after worship, we do have a congregational meeting where we go over budget and voting for a couple um, new people on church council. If you are not a voting member, you are more than welcome to stick around and look at our budget and see how we do things. I know it's going to be a slightly abbreviated meeting because of COVID, um, so we're going to try to make it short and sweet and to the point. So everyone's welcome to stay. Um, if you don't want to and think that you might be bored, I don't blame you. Um, if, if you are not a voting member, hold on. If you're a voting member, you got to stay. Because <laughs> um, we need a quorum and everything. Um, so um, just want you to know that's what's going right, af on right after worship. So if you're a voting member, stay. If you're not, you're welcome to stay, but you don't have to stay. You have a question? Yeah. And... And I'm like, uh, what if you don't know if you are a voting member? You are. Okay, cool. <laughs> I mean, uh, some of the times I actually forget. It, so. it, that's totally understandable. If you have ever officially joined the church, then you're a voting member. Okay, gotcha. Through baptism or through um, confirming your faith, okay. your baptismal faith. Gotcha. And let's see. Um, outreach meeting is next Sunday after church. Um, so that'll be in the library? Yeah. Okay. And what all are good stuff are you guys talking about to entice people to go? What? What good, exciting things are you talking about? Food bank. <laughs> okay. The food bank, stuff like that. Speaking of the food bank, when you walked in through the parking lot, you should have almost run into a table. And that's now where we're collecting food for the food closet. Um, it looks like what they're hoping for next week is mayonnaise. They're looking for 30 ounce jars of mayonnaise or cans of tuna fish, like the five ounce cans. And I'm sure they'll take other things too. Um, and care bags. Last Sunday, 18 bags were given out. Are there any left? We made 18 more. Oh, so that's why I wanted to tell everybody if you want to pick up another bag, um, they're in the uh, library. And I had a really good experience because when I went up to Sam's to pick up more stuff on the way back, there was a homeless lady in a wheelchair in a parking lot. And I stopped, and she was really very appreciative. And I asked her if she had a friend that was homeless, and she did, so I gave her two eggs. And so nice. she was really happy. So, if anybody has any experiences, let me know so we can know how it's going. So, yeah, they're great. They've got socks in them and all kinds of stuff. And some food and all sorts of essential things. Um, and they're, um, you can just put them in your car and then if you see somebody in need, um, give it to them. See, you, have, you look like you've got an, or itching to make an announcement. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be, during the uh, final hymn, 
I'm going to be coming down here and I'm going to be passing out some annual meeting agenda and what have you for our members. If we have anything, any left over uh, on the way back up, if you're a visitor and you're going to hang around, I can give you also one as well. Could raise your hand if you could not hear him. You're all clean in here. Okay, good. Okay, one person. So no the end. Oh no. The question. question: Are the donation uh, receipts available? Donation receipts. That was my next announcement that I have them, and so see me after church or at the, the uh, meeting. Okay, Ellen has your donation. What do you call it? Receipts, receipts um, for tax purposes. So. Um, see her after church. Okay. Any other announcements? No, but Jim saved me one of those. <laughs> All right. Okay. Any other announcements or questions? Okay. Then I invite you to stand one last time to receive the benediction. For those of you newer, we call this Lutheran aerobics. <laughs> Getting your morning calisthenics in. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in, today and forever. Amen. Amen.